Welcome, Flip Clock fans. We've got a General Electric here today. Flip Clock Radio, AM, FM. It's got a nice look to it. It's in pretty good shape. You see these on eBay quite often, but not uh, in this good a shape, typically. Looks like someone has put a secret code there, probably to stop someone from stealing it. What we've got here is the model C4315B, and it's coming to us from a place in New Hampshire called Goffstown. Now Goffstown, New Hampshire is located 9 miles west of Manchester and 61 miles northwest of Boston. The town center sits on the Piscataqua River. And like I said, this is a very special flip clock. Hey, did you know that the purple finch is the state bird of New Hampshire? But that's not what we're here. This is a special flip clock because Marsha from Goffstown sent it in to us. When Marsha was a youngster going through college, this was her flip clock radio that she used in her dorm. Thanks for sending it in, Marsha. We're going to take a look at it and see if we can't get it back to you in one piece. Now, the flip clock came out in about 1972, and it went to about 1975. It was considered their budget flip clock radio, but it's got really good sound to it. And it was also known as the 7-4315, same, same clock. I actually saw that on, on the box. Both designations were on the same box. So we're going to talk about how to get this apart and what might be going wrong with this. The, uh, the flip clock does not work. And whenever you plug it in, the radio is on all the time. Oh, to get, we're going to get the face off here, which is going to be difficult, but we have to get these buttons off to get the face off. And I can tell you, this, these probably have never been taken off before. They are really tight. This is the part that turns the flip clock, and it's not budging. And I bet a lot of you can tell me how I'm going to get that off here in a little bit. It's got to be the sleep function that is causing the radio to stay on all the time. And we'll get into that and see what that could be, or why it's doing that. It's got some scratches and some wear, but you know, again, this is this is a pretty good looking model here. Well, to get into this sucker, we're going to take these three screws out of the back. You can see that code up there at the top. Someone's going to see this video and say, hey man, they've got my flip clock. I don't know why we thought that was going to stop people from stealing. These are some honking big screws we've got here. I've never seen them that long before. Now, I play with this for a little while, and I always try to encourage people to be gentle. Because it wasn't coming out, and we see that some rascal put a screw there. Some uh, engineer thought it'd be good to have an extra screw there. I'm not sure what that does, except thwarts me from getting in it right away. And there we've got a lot going on here. We've got a big 4-inch speaker there in the back. We've got the stringed tuner here. And the flip clock motor is on the back side. And when you get a motor like this, you should be able to turn that with your finger. It goes counterclockwise, and it should freely move, and this one does not. It's got a gunked up feeling. Yeah, you guessed it, Gorilla Tape. We're going to use Gorilla Tape to get this last bit of knob off here. There's going to be a lot of product placement uh, this video, but I assure you it's not paid endorsement. But there's a lot of products in this video for some reason. Well, you get that on there tight, and that stuff is sticky, and it just comes right off, just like that. It takes a little bit to get it off your finger, but it's worth it. Gorilla Tape. For the toughest jobs on planet Earth. So, we've got that off, and... Before we go, I'm going to take a look at this sleep function here. And if the radio's on all the time, it's almost always that. Now, the radio does work with the switch now that we've loosened that up. We're going to check the alarm here. So it alarms to radio. And to the horrible buzzer. Get up, Marsha. Time to go to class. So... Again, we got to get into the motor. That's the cause of all the problems. You see there's the sleep function bar moving up and down. 
I think it just got jammed up a little bit. All the problems up in here in the motor. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and take this speaker out. There's only two screws holding this in. And that way I'll have a little more room to work. And I also want to get a look at the speaker, see what condition it is in. And it's in really good condition, as you can see. Just a, just a minimal amount of dust here. I think it's owing to the orientation of the speaker. Well, if you're ever doing restoration, I really highly encourage that you put a piece of cardboard over your speaker when you're working on it. It will save you some headache. Um, I have, unfortunately, learned that the hard way. This is just a piece of, like, a paper plate. It's thick enough to provide the protection. And a little cushion, or in this case, bubble wrap. That's going to keep screws from getting back there and from things puncturing it. Okay, it took me a while to figure out how I was going to get this off, so I I'm using a Outdoor Edge Razor Light EDC knife. They have a thin blade, and it's a very uh, sturdy blade, so I can pry this out gently from the bottom side. It took me a while to figure out how to do that because it's got tight tolerances there. But I need that off because I want to get that clean. Now, a lot of times online you'll see this part here is gone, and there's a reason for that. You can see here some rascal has affected a repair. we got to get that out of there. It just doesn't sit flat the way I'd like it to. And I don't trust this tape because it's not Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape. So this black glue that they used did not function very well. We want something that's going to hold that down up against the faceplate there. Here's another product. I like this Whirlpool Adhesive 279368. It's used on the felt and dryers. It just works really good for stuff like this. All right, so we'll get that fixed up later. We'll clean this up. You might be able to see there's a haze back here. I like to use cobalt tools. We need this 5.5 millimeter here to get these nuts off. I like cobalt because I like the color blue. And so that's why I use cobalt. That's pretty much it. I also like red, orange, and green. And this here is a lock washer. We'll want that back at some point. Now this case here, sometimes people think the noise is this can rubbing against that, and it's not often that at all. This is just gunked up. It needs, it needs oil in there. It should be spinning freely. Okay, I've got it spinning. I've got it energized, and I've spun it with my finger, but you see here if I stop it, it, it doesn't start back up on its own. So that's not good. It needs to start back up on its own. I'm checking to make sure the flip clock flips. We'll see here. It does. So we know it's not the mechanism. And it's all about this motor here. We've got to get this moving freely so that when we get this back to Marsha, when she plugs it in, now look here. That's open household current there. I've, I've been real careful here. I could have gotten shocked. Never been shocked yet, but here we go. I've been working on this a while, and I'm going to show you how you're supposed to oil this. You'll take a drop of oil and drop it into one of these holes and aim it down towards that arbor there, that axle. And you can use synthetic clock oil. But see, now that one on the outside, I just wanted to show you how fast it drips. You can use synthetic motor oil. You really can. So uh, one drop there, and it drops down. And then when you know it's about there, you... Give it a few spins. Now, I've done that several times. And also, you might want to let it run overnight. Now, there's a place here. There's a metal post coming out here. Might as well hit that with a drop of oil, too. And some of these metal gears, I might touch the arbor with a little drop of oil. No need to over-oil. Now, you see, that's what you want to have happen when you plug it in. You want the motor to come on right away. And it does. Now again, this is a sleep function. Some of the younger crowd may not know what that is. You turn it on, and after a set amount of time, it goes off based on the motor here. 
other that pushes that up which pushes this button on this micro switch which puts the radio on of course this radio only plays 70s music which is awesome so that's how that sleep function works i think it was just jammed a little bit Here's the motor designation, just for posterity's sake. And we're going to go ahead and get this motor back together. Get my lock washers on there. There's my nuts. A lot of people are wanting to torque nuts and screws down on these things, and I'm always advising people to not do that. You're not working on the engine of your 72 Chevy Impala or anything. You need to just give it a nice, nice little snug. Firm, but tolerable. Okay, here we go. Here's the speaker. It survived. Real good sound coming out of that speaker. Again, more 70s music for you. I have to mute that down so I don't get a strike. It just goes back in there like so. And it's got these rubber cushion washer things. Just two of them here. Well, there it is. The General Electric C4315B. It's going to go back to New Hampshire. I hope this has helped somebody. Thanks for taking the time.